<laughs> and uh, she's one of the great people I've known, you know, as great, certainly, as, uh, as Churchill or Roosevelt or George Marshall, and I suppose Marshall is the greatest man I ever met. Really? Yes, I would think so. What, what would you admire what, about him above everybody else? Human being. Mm -hmm. I think he's the, he's the greatest human being who was also a great man who I was ever mm. privileged to meet. Have you known some that were... Can I tell a little story about him? Certainly. We'd been campaigning for Roosevelt, not George Marshall, but some of the rest of us, and one of our rewards when he got in again, one of those many times that he did, was to go to a big party of very big brass and sit on the dais and be treated as though we were part of the high command just for one night. And there were all these tremendous names from the Second World War. Two or three civilians. Truman, the vice president, who was playing the piano. We were rather embarrassed about that because... Uh, uh, he didn't seem to be awfully good on the piano. <laughs> and we didn't know that he was going to be a great president, you see. I see. And it didn't look as though he did either. Isn't that <laughs> but he and my... So there were only about four or five civilians. All the rest were tremendous brass, dripping with gold, braid, and medals, and everything else. And it was in the Mayflower Hotel in Washington. And the door opened. And uh, G.I., more innocent looking than anything you could possibly imagine and younger than anything you could dream of, stuck his head in. Mm. At the moment when General Marshall happened to look toward the door and the boy looked at him, he said, gee, General Marshall, can I come in and say hello to you? Marshall said, yeah, come in. And Marshall didn't know anybody was watching. This wasn't a grandstand play. I was in a position, my camera was angled so he didn't know he was getting photographed in anybody's film of memory. Yeah. And he took the boy aside, away from everybody, and sat down with him. And I heard as he went that the boy had been away from home. Was, and the boy recognized Marshall as somebody like a family. Now, this was the commander of the, all the Allied forces. And he sat with this boy without any grandstanding at all mm -hmm. and just put him at ease and made him feel at home again for half an hour and left all the rest of us. He was that kind of fellow. I wonder what the difference is between a man like that and the ones who are impressive publicly but couldn't be bothered to talk to anyone that isn't important to them or flattered. Well, I, I don't know. Those, those kind of people are all second rate who can't be bothered at all, ever. Mm -hmm. But there are those who can't be bothered sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, and that's... You had a feeling with Marshall that if it were possible to be bothered, he would let himself be bothered. He was a tremendous gentleman, you know, mm -hmm. an old-fashioned institution which isn't with us anymore. Okay. You almost never want to ask anyone the question who's impressed you the most, and it's, it's wonderful yeah. to have a guest who can give you the answer. Well, I never do know the answers to those kind of They're questions, hard, you know, but I just yeah. happen to know that one.